Hi everyone, thanks for, I can see everyone starting to join our session, which is wonderful. Uh, we'll just wait a few minutes um, till we, um, everyone gets a chance to log in and then we'll get started. Just wait one more minute. Okay, so we might get started, I think. Um, so thanks for joining us. Welcome to the first information session on our Waterloo Creative Live Workspace 2023. This session is being recorded and um, we have two Auslan interpreters here today. Uh, this Auslan interpreting view is best viewed in side-by-side -side mode in view options. If you need to access Auslan interpreting, please do it that way and you can increase the size of the interpreter's screens. My name's Annette and I'm a cultural projects coordinator with the cultural space and sector development team at the City of Sydney. Firstly, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm joining you today from Gadigal land, and I'd like to acknowledge the original custodians of our local area and acknowledge First Peoples continued connection to country. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are joining us in today's session. Just to go through how this session is going to work, um, I'm just going to run through some housekeeping. Um, as I, as you can see, and as I've mentioned, the session is being Auslan interpreted, and we can also make transcriptions of the session available if required. Um, the, as you know, this is being recorded, and we're going to make this recording available on the city's web page for you to visit after today's session. Um, and you should be able to access that shortly after today, definitely by tomorrow. Um, because we're holding the information session in the Zoom webinar format rather than meetings, attendees aren't able to speak unless we unmute you. So if you have any questions or any, experiencing any issues, please use the Q&A chat function to communicate with us and um, our staff here are monitoring that Q&A and we'll be able to hopefully um, answer your questions as we go along. After the webinar, we're going to send you all a follow-up email with the link to the Creative Live Workspaces web page and all the documents that are there. <clears throat> so I'm going to speak for a little bit about um, what the program is, the priorities of the program and the requirements of applicants. And then we'll have a look at the apartment together. And um, then Kathy from Grants is going to um, talk to us about the application process. After the presentation, we'll have a brief Q&A, a dedicated Q&A session for attendees. Um, and um, I think that's everything that we needed to do in terms of the agenda. So I'm just gonna move, jump straight into the, um, what the program's about. 
So the City of Sydney has long recognised the challenges facing artists when seeking affordable space to live and work in the inner city. Since 2013, so going on 10 years now, the city has responded to this by offering subsidised residential leases in properties located in Darlinghurst and Waterloo, so artists can both live and work from the same premises close to the city. The city's programs for the cultural sector are guided by the Creative City Cultural Policy and Action Plan, and also the Community Recovery Plan, which was established in response to COVID-19. These documents set out the strategic priorities we've identified to unlock the creative potential of the city and support the creative communities within it. As a property owner, one of the ways we meet this need is to offer access to city owned property in the local government area through our programs. We currently provide space to 80 organisations and artists in 32 properties, totaling around 10,000 square metres of space. We are the largest provider of subsidised workspace for cultural use in Australia. The city recognises that artists living and working in the inner city are really important to creating a vibrant and sustainable city. And we know that artists living and working in the heart of the city is a key to th a thriving cultural ecosystem. And one of the most critical needs is for affordable housing for artists. So when we look at the expected outcomes of this program, with the priorities we're supporting are an increased opportunity for creatives to live and work in the city and a strengthened cultural sector connecting, creating connections and networks in the city. This particular offer is one three bedroom creative live work apartment on Elizabeth Street in Waterloo, providing a studio and residential accommodation. The apartment would either accommodate a small family or a small group of creative practitioners with no more than three adults in the space under this program. For creative couples or partnerships to apply, one artist should be the lead applicant. And for each response in your application, provide information about each artist in the group. It is a condition of the program that tenants must live and work on their creative practice for the duration of the program. Um, under the program, we rent residential properties at a subsidised rate. The rate for this property is $200 per week and a four week bond is required to be paid. Rent is to be paid fortnightly in advance by direct debit or by EFT. The successful tenant will then enter into an 18 month residential tenancy lease and be responsible for all other costs and outgoings. The tenancy timeframe will commence toward the middle of October this year and go through until April 2025. Applicants are required to demonstrate a relevant creative practice and how they would benefit creatively from the opportunity. The successful applicant will work with the City of Sydney to plan their goals for the year and fulfil the obligations and expectations of the tenancy. But please note that this is a practice based, not a project based opportunity. This means that you don't need to develop a new idea or a new project for your app to make an application. We just need to see that your creative practice is ongoing and developing throughout the tenancy. The documents that you've already accessed, if you're in, in this um, webinar, you would have already accessed them. These documents outline what the tenant responsibilities are. So please read them carefully and make sure you're familiar with everything. If you have any questions at all that aren't answered in these documents, please reach out to us on email, or you can also do it by the Q&A today in the Q&A function of the Zoom chat. All other costs and living expenses are the tenants. These include relocation, moving costs, cleaning, including cleaning at the end of the tenancy, any additional keys, and the electricity and internet bills, any contents insurance you require, and the costs for producing your work. Some other responsibilities that fall on the participants in the program include communicating with the city and keeping in touch with us about your progress and the goals of your practice. 
Um, other opportunities include participating in media opportunities, attending and contributing at open studio workshops or talks during the time. We also request participants um, participate in any research surveys that we require and at the end of the tenancy, completion of a report of your experience and how the opportunity benefited you and your practice. There'll also be network and, and training or professional development opportunities offered by the city to all tenants during the tenancy. So what is a creative? It's a, it's a pretty broad term. This program is open to all individuals working in the creative industry. This could include visual arts, product design, fashion design, visual communication, graphic design, performing arts, photography, music industry, or writers. Applicants must be 18 years or older and either be Australian citizens or have permanent residency status. In terms of who is encouraged to apply, Access to space is a key issue for all creative practitioners in Sydney. And the city is also aware of the structural challenges facing Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander artists, artists with disability and creative practitioners who are culturally and linguistically diverse. These practitioners identify less satisfaction in accessing opportunity to participate in the cultural workforce in Sydney. So that's why in the application process, priority will be given to applicants who are artists or creative practitioners with disability or who are deaf, who are Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander artists and creative practitioners, and artists or creative practitioners who are culturally and linguistically diverse. In your application, you can tell us how the opportunity will support you. If you are a member of these communities and need additional support through the application process, please reach out and we'll put you in touch with the grants team. To summarise what we're looking for, what we're looking to see in this application process, you'll need to show that you're a practising creative, that in your practice you reflect the city's values, that you have the capacity to manage a space and take on the responsibilities of a lease, including that you can meet the financial obligations of a residential lease. Overall, that the city is supporting you to do your work will provide benefit to the city's community, to Sydney's community of artists and creative workers and add to the character and strength of the cultural sector. In your application, you'll be asked to describe your practice, current goals and intended focus of your creative practice over the 18 months of the tenancy. You'll need to describe why the, why the tenancy will benefit you at this point in the development of your creative work or practice how the location of the tenancy will influence and benefit your creative work or practice, and also any indication of any potential impacts of the materials that you use in your practice and how you intend to manage work, health and safety during your tenancy. Families and relationship partners of applicants are welcome. There's a maximum of three adults permitted to live in this apartment. If partners are both work and creatives, it's recommended recommended that you consider making a joint application. If your partner is not a working creative, then it's important to disclose this in your initial application. Please know that this is an open and transparent competitive grant process. Your application will be assessed internally by specialist cultural staff who have expertise across different art forms. We really look forward to reading your proposals. Thanks for staying with me through this presentation so far. We're going to now take a look at the apartment. So this is a photograph that's taken from the roof, it's at, off, from the terrace out of the back of the, the apartment. The apartment itself is located at the rear of Waterloo Library at 770 Elizabeth Street, Waterloo. The um, this expression of interest process offers one three bedroom apartment. The property itself is scheduled for refurbishments in the next couple of months. And due to the estimated timing of the proposed refurbishment works, we're unable to arrange in-person property inspections within the stage one timeframe of this opportunity. However, we've got a virtual tour, which I'll show you in a second. You may have already had a look at that through the links on the application documents. And we've also got some indicative images to give you a sense of the property in its current state. 
you must take a virtual tour of the property before starting your application, just to make sure it will meet your needs and your practice. Um, this property is accessed only by stairs. There is no lift. Um, there's a rooftop terrace, which was that um, lovely image that we just saw. There's a separate laundry room, a living room, an eating kitchen, three bedrooms, and one bathroom. So um, let's have a look now at the, uh, have a quick look at the virtual tour. I'm just gonna change the screen that we're sharing. So you can see the virtual tour. Um, are you guys seeing that virtual tour? Yep. Okay. So this is, I'll just, I'll go out the front door, Oop. go through the kitchen. So you can see where you come through. So this is the, um, this is the terrace. So I'll just turn around so you can see where you're looking. So to the right hand side, this little, um, uh, fence here is the stairs to get up to the apartment and then there's this second set of stairs um, to get into the front door of the apartment and the laundry room is accessed at the stairs as well. So inside we have a, a large kitchen area, oops, a large kitchen area, a quite a large bathroom which is accessed off the kitchen. And then through the living area, we have um, this is the living area here, and down the hallway are the three bedrooms. So I'm just going past one, the second one, this particular tenant used the second bedroom as a studio, and then there's a third bedroom at the end. So I'll I'll leave you to um, have a look at that more closely in your own time. So I'll jump back into the um, floor plan now. Um, are you guys seeing that floor plan? Yep. Okay, so this, this floor plan, the, um, the floor plan won't change. The refurbishment is not going to be changing that lay, layout of the apartment at all. Um, and subject to the City of Sydney's discretion, it may be possible to apply for a parking permit with proof of tenancy. I'm now going to hand over to Cathy, who's going to talk us through the application process. Um, Cathy, I'll, I'll operate the slides for you. I'm just going to scroll through now. Okay, thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, before starting your application, please read the Information for Applicants Guide and the Lease. If we get asked questions about things that are not in the Information for Applicant documents, we will update the website with these questions and answers. You must have taken a virtual tour of the property before starting an application. This will allow you to see if the space is suitable for you and your creative practice. If you are a successful applicant, you'll be asked to attend an in-person viewing of the apartment to ensure that it is suitable before you sign a lease. You will submit your application through the city's Smarter Grants online portal. The application form covers four areas as outlined in the Information for Applicants document. This reflects the structure of the application form, so hopefully easy to follow. It's a good idea to review the application form early so that you know what is required. Applications close on Tuesday the 1st of August at 5pm sharp, and no further applications will be accepted after this time, so make sure you allow plenty of time to upload documents into the system. Once applications close, there'll be a period of assessment by a panel of assessors. Next slide, please. So what to expect? There are two stages to this process. For stage one, you'll apply through the Smarty Grants online portal and you'll need to provide an artist bio or CV, examples of previous work, uh, a three page PDF up to three megabytes. This document could include a link to your online portfolio or links to other online examples of your work. A maximum 300 word personal statement describing your creative practice, current goals and intended focus of your creative practice over the 18 months of the tenancy. Maximum 300 word personal statement about why the tenancy will benefit you at this point in the development of your creative work or practice and maximum 
300 word personal statement about how the location of the tenancy will influence and benefit your creative work or practice. When you apply on Smarter Grants, you will be asked to confirm that you have attended an information <coughs> session. So you, by attending here, you've completed this step, viewed the virtual tour of the apartment and read the sample lease. You can find all this information in the information for applicants document. The assessment panel will select one applicant who will be recommended for the program. They will move on to stage two. In addition to the rec recommended applicant, the panel will also nominate a, one, a wait list of two to three applicants who may also be suitable for the program who, and who may be offered a place if the recommended applicant withdraws. For stage two, the recommended applicant will be contacted and asked to complete a real estate tenancy application as the final stage of the application process. Similar to other residential tenancy checks, the recommended applicant is required to provide a previous landlord referee and evidence they are in a position to meet the financial obligations of the residential lease. That is being able to meet the commitment to pay $200 a week rent, as well as meet the other living expenses. As a landlord, the city is under an obligation to make sure we aren't signing you up to an ongoing financial commitment that you can't afford to pay. So you will need to demonstrate that you have a track record of generating income or ability to pay. Financial evidence could include previous year's tax return or financial statements, pay slips if you have an ongoing part-time job, invoices indicating recent earnings, proof of savings, proof of future work funding, contracts or agreements. You will also need 100 points of ID. Thanks, Annette. Thanks, Kathy. So, um, applications are open now and we encourage you to apply early rather than waiting until the day of the expression of interest period, when, un, until the date of close of the expression of interest period. We also encourage you to start preparing your financial information and form a landlord reference checks now so that if you are contacted about being a shortlisted applicant, you're ready to provide your paperwork for consideration without delay. We hope to notify all applicants of their progress by early September so that you can make um, all the plans that you need to. So here we're seeing the key dates. So we've got a um, few weeks till the 1st of August. So there's still time to get things together. Um, we are at the stage planning to have the tenancy application and approval completed by the start of September and the tenancy been commencing midway through October. That is the current um, projected timeline. If you have any questions about applying for this opportunity, please email our team um, at creativecity at cityofsydney.nsw.gov.au and do use the subject line Waterloo CLWS 2023 question. Um, that will help us um, get your question answered by the right person as quickly as possible. All the information uh, presented here today can be found in the application guide, which is a PDF document on the web page of the city's website. Um, and yeah, any questions at all, even if they seem silly or obvious, please just ask as many as you like. We're here to help. So that's, we've come to the end of the sort of formal presentation. We've got time now to take any questions. Um, uh, I can see Danielle's typing away. I think she must be answering some questions. Um, I'll just jump in and see if there's any that we would like, we can answer on the go. Sorry, yeah, they were good. Um, um, can the uh, attendees see the questions that you've answered? There's two that have just come in. Um, mid is, so is mid-October is the estimated timeline of the finished refurb. Um, we actually are hopeful that it's before that, but um, as with all things, construction and um, those type of materials and labour things, it's a, it's a little bit fluid, but we are certainly anticipating that mid-October, we anticipate that that's when we'll have, be ready for a tenant to move in. If that's hopefully that answers your question, Joshua. Um, 
everybody should be notified of their, there's a question, when would the shortlisted folks be notified? Everyone should be notified of the outcome of their application, whether they're a shortlist or um, a recommended or preferred applicant by the beginning of September. We are hoping to give people as much time as possible to, um, to make their plans. Um, there's a question here, are pets considered as part of the application? Um, I'm assuming you don't mean the pet as an artist, you mean are pets allowed on, on, the, on the lease? And the answer is yes. Um, no, uh, noting, of course, that it's a, an apartment. So it, as long as the pet is, um, it, it's an okay environment, an apartment for a, 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 your pet to live in. Um, it, it is an apartment, it does have a small outside area, but you'd need to kind of make your own uh, decision about that, whether that would suit your pet. Um, I wasn't in this a question, do we know how many applications you received for this when it was last open? I wasn't in this role. Um, and my colleague also that is currently, we, we weren't in this role when it, when it was last open. So I'm afraid we can't answer that question. Um, can you leave the lease early before 18 months? I think that's possible. Um, that we just, there's just some internal processes that we'd need to check. Um, if that attendee would like to, um, email the Creative City email address with that question. I can find out some more detail and, um, and get back to you. Um, and we can hopefully publish that information on the website as well. So other um, applicants have access to that same information. Is there three phase power anywhere on the property? We have to check that one as well. Um, I might just grab some of these. Um, Actually, Danielle, do you mind just grabbing them and popping them in a note and I'll answer, I'll look for the answers for those afterwards, the one on the property, the one on the power and what the process is for leaving the lease early. Um, would have an, ex an existing premises warehouse hinder an application? Um, I guess it's, it's difficult to answer that question without understanding what um, without without comparing it to other applicants' situations as well, but also understanding the detail of what that other premise does, whether that's a residential premise or a studio, or I think I think that we'd need to understand a lot more detail about um, what that situation is before answering that. And we would really, I, I would just really recommend you put as much information as you can into your application. Um, and I think it wouldn't be until we're assessing the applications that we'd be able to make that to give an opinion on that particular question. Would have being a successful applicant for a previous live workspace hinder an application? Um, do you have a, I'm, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but um, it, it's very difficult to know, to, to say, to be able to say without knowing what, the it's a competitive process to so without knowing what the other applicants uh, cases are it would be hard to it, it's not easy to give you an, a straightforward answer to that sorry Millie um, I'll just leave a few more minutes in case anybody has any other questions they'd like answered No other questions? Oh, if we are unsuccessful, is there a chance to have provided feedback on our application? Yes, certainly. Um, that that is, is definitely something we would um, would like to do because um, these, these opportunities do come up every now and then. And so if you have been an unsuccessful applicant, um, this one we would really want you to be encouraged to apply in the future. And we certainly have had um, previously unsuccessful applicants reapply to new years of the um, program and have been successful. So yeah, we really um, appreciate that question and do as much as we can to keep all applicants engaged with these sorts of opportunities. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Not a question, but thank you for what you guys are doing. Oh, very welcome. Thank you for that. It's lovely.
Uh, one more question. Is there more information about previous program applicants? Um, do you mean previous program applicants or previous program tenants, success, uh, people that have been successful in applying? Tenants, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the current tenants are the current tenants we have, as well as the Waterloo space, which is one three bedroom apartment. We have six one bedroom apartments in Darlinghurst. Those apartments are currently tenanted by six artists. Um, yeah, in in the chat, yeah. So Danielle um, is going to put the link, uh, which will have information about all the current tenants. Um, who are at Darlinghurst, where you can read their bios and see what their practice is and the, and the sort of diversity of the different practices. Um, so Danielle's just going to put the link. I think that information, if you scroll down on our web page, if you scroll down to the bottom, I think that the current tenants uh, who have been in since February, I think they started their tenancies in Darlinghurst, you can see um, who those tenants are and who those tenants are and what their practices are. Um, all right, we'll just give it a couple more minutes in case um, we have any more questions. Um, okay, so the, there's one question, who organises the bills or NBN? Um, the uh, electricity, the tenant plays the electricity and internet, internet, yeah, the ten, that's the tenant at the tenant's cost, those two, um, those two particular um, bills. If your partner doesn't have permanent residency yet, but is a creative, do you still count as a creative partnership? Hmm. Um, the to be eligible, you need to be an Australian to be eligible as a successful applicant, you need to be an Australian citizen or have permanent residency. Um, yeah, so, so the person who is the permanent resident would need to be the head tenant. Um, but I understand what you're saying. Is it, um, would it strengthen your application by noting them as a creative partnership? Um, do you mind, um, I, I, yeah, I think just uh, give as much detail as you can in your application. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's worth putting in that, you know, but both put, put, put in um, both sets of information that you're both creatives, but only one of you has permanent residency and that per one has permanent residency would need to be the, the applicant. But please, um, you know, share as much as you can about um, your practices. Um, well, we might finish there. And um, if any other questions come up during your app over the next few weeks as you're putting your applications together, please do reach out through that email address. I'll just pop it back on screen so you can see. Um, here, yeah, this email address. If you can just send us through emails to that using the subject line Waterloo Creative Live Workspace 2023 question, and um, we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. And um, we wish you all the best with your applications. Thanks very much. <laughs>